Yeah, I forgot to close that up. Alrighty, I was like doing way too many things all at once. And yeah, I forgot that that was going to pop back up. Hello, Rescued E-Liquids. Hello, Phil Lee, Dave Satek, and Chris Earl. How you guys doing? Welcome to the show. Early birds, appreciate you guys. Seriously, thank you for all the support and all that kind of thing. Ah. Uh. Dude, it is 10 o'clock where you're at. That's crazy. I, I hear you, though, man. I hear you. Yes, there's a vlog. Frank, you bastard. You salty, salty bastard. Uh, so, how's it going? Hopefully, everybody's having a good Thursday. Um, no, there's a lot of shows today, honestly. Uh, I did move this up an hour. I'm just trying to see if this is a little bit better. I actually feel less rushed because I get home from work about like one ish o'clock ish maybe like 115 at the best and i just felt like it's uh i'm like rushing we try to get lunch in and all that and it just it just turns into this giant flop that i i find a little bit annoying so i just thought this would be a little bit easier hopefully this works out better uh so i'm here we are. It is the vlog. Uh, I do got articles. I got a beer. I got some what I've been vaping. And, like, uh, there's a couple other things. Uh, like, I don't know. I've been trying to think of other things I could add to this. But we'll see. I mean, it's I'm, I'm winging it for the most part right now. Just seeing what I get to do. Alrighty. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> see, I told you. Frank is salty. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He's normally the, the, the weirdo, cheery guy, but lately he's just angry. He's angry at everything. Probably because he lives in Canada, and it's winter, and it's really cold. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. All right, so let's jump into some what I've been vaping. So let's do this. Yeah, and I still need to change those bumpers with the new logo. I haven't gotten around to it yet, and, you know, it is, it's one of those things. We'll, we'll get to it when we get there. All right, so what I've been vaping, uh, we're going to start off with this fellow right here. I'm really digging this thing, the Skivo, Squivo, whatever, from Cyclone Mods with the Citadel, just a complete Cyclone Mod setup right there. And that, I got that Tropica. Still rocking it from yesterday. I've been rocking it the last couple of days. Really enjoying this, honestly. Uh, I know, like, the reviews on it were not the greatest. And I can see um, what points they might be. But, I don't know. Like, uh, the review will be out pretty soon. Hopefully, I, I hopefully think so. And, uh, yeah. So, next, uh, it's just squonk heavy, heavy day for me. Uh, still rocking that Luna with the Jenna on top. DHD drip tip on there just makes it all kind of matchy matchy if I had the black cap for this that would be amazing because I would just completely match it up but in that I got a blue sin this labels just destroyed but yeah that's from my own personal line and then uh, up next we have the top side dual with the Typhoon BTD and in that I'm rocking some of that uh, benthol seriously benthol picks them up it's amazing it's great and as far as menthols go, I, I like menthols. Honestly, I've actually come to realize I like menthols, but most of them choke me up and they just really don't work out for me. So I try to stay away from them. But this guy is amazing. It, it's it got a great flavor profile and it doesn't choke me up. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's a nice, soft, cool ben, uh, menthol style vape. I'm not angry. All caps for intensity. <laughs> oh that's funny and yes my wife has a, a heavy delay because she's sitting right behind me so yeah maybe she'll wave here in a second we'll see and i do have other things i'm vaping on but i'm not gonna go through everything just because that would make this segment so much more longer and makes it kind of annoying but seriously like uh was it like on the omis i don't know about wolf bite maybe frank can tell me but uh, on the omis i know we don't talk about every last thing we're vaping on because that would make just that segment alone the full hour that we use dude 
Dude, that's amazing. Rescued reviews. That is awesome. I'm glad that uh, that, that helped a bit because, honestly, that's the point, you know. Uh, what Rescued Reviews is talking about, I'm, yeah, uh, what, uh, I'm assuming Nick is running it right now. Um, what he's talking about, or maybe it's Kelly, I don't know. Whoever's running it, let me know. But um, they were talking about is that they are uh, doing a fundraiser for a little girl who has cancer, and they're trying to help the family out and stuff like that. And on their group, they are actually running uh, like a waffle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so whatever money they collect goes towards your spot to win a uh, mech mod. I think it comes with an RDA also. 90% that's Kelly. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So, um, you know, Comer parts are delicious. Um, so, if you guys go over to their group, they have the whole form. You fill it out. You get how many spots you want and all that kind of thing. So, if you guys didn't catch the wolf bite yesterday, we were talking about it. Go over there. Fill out the form. It's, I think, like $10 a spot or something like that. It's like... It's not like you're like really putting a whole lot into this and you're helping a great cause, helping out a great family and all that kind of thing. Because, I mean, I don't know, but like having to deal with a child with cancer, it's got to be rough. I couldn't even imagine having to deal with it. Uh, like my kids, for the most part, are pretty healthy. The boy kind of suffers from asthma and watching him go through a little like episode, I guess you would call it, is really not that fun. And it's a pain in the ass to deal with. So... You know, it's one of those things. Oh, and there's tons of prizes. And I know, like, Steel Steel City Vapors is uh, one of the major sponsors on that. And, you know, they're helping them out with all that kind of thing and all that. So there is a lot of things going on over there. Go check it out. Go go donate whatever bit you can. Get a couple of spots. So, you know, help out a great cause. But I'm glad that yesterday alone helped. And hopefully the, uh, the Omis talked about it this past week. Cause I know I wasn't on the show and I haven't really watched the full replay. So I, I don't know what they did. I'm entirely TC. So would only want to donate. I don't have too much month left at the end of the month. All right, cool. I mean, Philly, whatever you can, man, whatever you can. Chris, Earl, I, I hear you. Honestly, I never thought I would like menthols, but I just, I don't know. Like, I tried my first one. I thought it was great and all that kind of thing. Uh, when I got my Luna, did I have a funky taste in the bottles? No, honestly, I did not. I stopped using my, no, I honestly, I didn't, I didn't have any, like, funky taste or anything like that. Dude, Bubby Blindy, we still need to get you on Wolf Bite, dude. I know you say you're going to break the camera. We could just have a thumbnail for you or something. I don't care, but we need to have you on the show because you are hilarious, dude. Um, So uh, let's jump into some beer. Honestly, I don't know how I'm going to do this pairing because mostly everything I'm vaping on right now is like fruit and stuff like that. So we're going to try to power through this segment and see how it goes. But yeah, let's uh, let's hit that bumper. Where is it? Where? There it is. Beer time. <laughs> All right, so for beer, we have from uh, Temptress, from uh, Lakewood Brewing, we have Temptress Imperial Milk Stout Peanut Butter Edition. I've had this bottle for a while, and I've been really looking forward to this, and I've I've had to hold on to this bottle because, yeah, you know. This was bottled August 1st of 2019, and let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, it's at a 9.1 alcohol by volume. Uh, 56 IBUs, and I don't know what any of the other information on here is. Let me see. For whichever neighborhood you call home, consider this beer equivalent of a peanut butter cup. We took our rich and dreamy milk stout and made it extra with chocolate peanuts and a touch of sea salt. The result is a creamy peanut buttery treat that fit for most candy aisles. Enjoy chilled favorite glass which isn't which isn't a candy coated but it'll do since temptress so easily mingles with both flavors and ingredients we created this seduction series limited variations 
of our Symphony Sultry Brew. All right. Uh, I've tried their milk stout. It is a really, really good milk stout. They make liquid brewing makes some amazing beers. And I've really enjoyed some of the stuff they make. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do this pour before it leaks out everywhere. Got it started. Whoa. And I got spill. Where'd my rag go here? That, that was really heady for no reason. All right. Yeah, sadly, it is on Facebook, and I know some folks are uh, some folks are very uh, not on Facebook or don't really use Facebook for X amount of reasons. Honestly, I only have Facebook because of the. Well, I don't even know honestly because I like I have it for the business, and even then, the business side of things is kind of a little low. No, oh, okay. Yeah, that turned out to be mostly head for no reason at all. But it's a very nice little dark beer. Look at that. And all that right there on top. I'm hoping it goes down <laughs> sometime soon. Hey there. How you doing, Tuna? How is it going? All right. So we're attempting beer for now. All right. Let's see. It's starting to go down. That definitely has a uh, that definitely has a very uh, stout like smell, which I mean, obviously, I don't know. I'm not really smelling any like peanut buttery kind of smell. Yeah, it just reminds me of a stout, like of a standard standard stout. All right, let's see. Yeah, this thing kind of got all over my desk. It's gonna smell like beer for a while. It smells funky. All right. Well, let's see if I can get a little bit more in there. All right. Well, let's see. If, <laughs> give this a try. This isn't going so good, but we'll see. Okay. Yeah, that's uh that is strange. Hmm. It has like that uh like their milk out, it does have the same amount of creaminess. It's very um it tastes like like it has a very heavy milky taste. And that peanut butter does actually hit you. Like it's kinda in the back end of it. It's pretty weird. <laughs> uh, Bubby Blind it, you crack me up, dude. All right. Oh, man. So, yeah, I'm still, I don't know how to feel about this. It's interesting. I'll give you that much. Uh, all right. Actually, hey, what I have in this guy right here, this is the, um, the Drip Tech TS with the dang RDA on top. I have a, what is this again? It's like a cookie something or other. It's like a toffee cookie. <laughs> so let's see how this goes. Okay. Yeah, that, that worked out pretty good. It brings out more of the stout flavor out of it, not the peanut butter. If anything, it muted it completely. It added a little bit of sweetness to it. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how to feel about it. I was very looking forward to this, but I'm not sure now. Hmm. Whoa, what did I do? What did I do? Alright, here we go. Um, 
I don't know. Still, it was good. It's not bad. It's just like the beer itself is really awkward. All right, let's. Uh, this one I have a uh, strawberry and cream type situation. Let's see. See, I blended with the stout portion of the beer. Add it to the creaminess, like that milk stout flavor comes out a little bit more. But it's not like um, that peanut butter is just dead completely. I don't know. It's kind of becoming slightly disappointing. If I can say that. I'm just trying to pour the rest of this in here. We'll say as far as bubbles and such it goes a little a little bonkers there say hi right here hi <laughs> like how the camera actually focused for once <laughs> oh man but yeah uh let's see next i'm gonna go with this guy and then i'm gonna do one more and that'll probably be the end of this segment and even then like i said i'm a little feeling a little bit uh disappointed Awesome, Josh. Welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, awesome, dude. That'd be cool. Doing some quotes for work. So, you do you sell them at a shop or do you work at a shop? I mean, uh, what's up, DC Rackley? How you doing? All right. So, this is the K Fun on top of the what is this thing called again? The Takeover. And in this, I got Velez. Velez. Mouth to lung edition. So this is going to be even more interesting. Okay. That was actually pretty good. Really made it really sweet. But it wasn't like um, offensive at any level. Again, that peanut butter is just dead. It's like an afterthought. That's like what's disappointing me about this is that it's very, very just bleh. It's very meh on the whole portion of peanut butter. Try to move things over here out of my way. All right. Lastly, I'm going to try my own juice. Uh, this is Rectum Balls in the, uh, the Vert Recoil setup. Okay, cool. Helping a friend out for a shop. Nice, dude. Nice. Well, hopefully that works out for you and you know all that jazz because dude it, it ain't easy out there so any bit of work you can get is always good always good all right so let's see how this goes Yeah, that definitely did not work. That was terrible. I think the only one that would probably work with this really well out of my line would have been Mint Me. Like I do have a bottle of Super Cereal over here, but I don't have it in anything. I just kind of was like, hey, I haven't vaped this in a while. Let's 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 make a bottle. What's up, the user abuser? Dude, no worries, man. Honestly, oh, wow, that, that sucks, man. Uh, hopefully everything's going well. And all that, dude. Trust me. Uh, like my parents are getting up there in age, and not looking forward to that. Honestly, <laughs> uh, my mom just turned seventy. My dad turns what is it, sixty four? Here in a couple of days. So, really, at times they worry me. Just say, at times they worry me. But at least I'm spending time with them and all that kind of thing. Yeah, man, trust me, it is one of those things. It is one of those things. All right, so yeah, for the beer, I think I'm done, and I'm still not sure. It's all over my desk, so that'll make for an amazing time over here. And yeah, alrighty, so let's just move into some, some rantiness time. So news and advocacy. <laughs> Alrighty, so as I always say, 
stay vigilant, stay on top of things, be aware of your local surroundings, and make sure you know what's going around, like, everywhere. I mean, we kind of get, like, the federal end of things. For the most part, we get, like, the state government type of things. But do be aware of what's going on for you locally within your town, within your county, because sometimes they sneak those in there and nobody finds out about it. I mean, um, I remember back in 2016, there was a town hall meeting in the town I actually work in. And they were talking about like, uh, like businesses and vaping in businesses, which I mean, I agree, unless it's a vape shop, you shouldn't really vape, be vaping inside of a business. But, uh, as far as I know, the current laws in that town is six feet away from any door and not in open areas. So you got to be careful where you're vaping, but like, it's very, a vape specific law. It's not even like two cigarettes or anything. It's just a very vape specific law. So you got to be very, very aware of what's going on, what is happening around you and let, you know, be aware and also spread the word. I mean, it's one of those things of, you know, just cause you know about it doesn't mean your friend knows about it or like somebody else knows about it. So if you have any local advocacy groups and stuff like that, make sure you post to them and make everybody more aware of things. I know as far as things are going, there's something going on in Vermont right now. Uh, last week there was things going on in Maryland. So there's just shit going on everywhere and we got to make sure we stay on top of everything and we keep fighting. It's one of those things, uh, Josh, uh, on the Lyra video, you you question like what else can we do and i mean i uh, i did respond to it and i will respond to it here um go to local shops talk to the shop owners talk to the shop clerks uh you'll get a lot of like no's and shit like that because it happens to me i've gone into shops and i've asked what are they doing for advocacy and things like that they either look at me like they don't know what the fuck they're talking about or they don't want to hear it there is thankfully some shops that do actually care and they were willing to like at least bullshit with you about it. And, you know, you talk about like different things and this and that, like the shop that's local to me. I don't really go to them anymore most of the time because part of it is a lot of their stuff is a little bit overpriced, which sucks because, you know, that's the only way you can support local shops. But Bigfoot scene vaping in Vermont. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I do check up on let shop every so often just to see how are things going and i mean they're still thriving they're still doing their thing uh and i mean around here a lot of shops are starting to convert into like hybrid shops where they sell glass and vape gear and it's just more to cover themselves because if one goes away they could still keep doing the other and they still have a business deanna just passed a 20 percent nick cap uh okay so Okay, so like 20 milligram is like the highest you can go. Is that like, is that what it is? Or is, uh, now I'm trying to think in like mixing terms over here now. Because the percentages are all weird compared. Because if you're doing like 3% in a, st okay, okay, okay. Yeah. No, I mean, personally, I'm okay with like a 20 milligram cap. Because I don't think we should be going any higher. I I am a firm believer of salt nicks are being misused. They're used the wrong way. And they should actually reverse the way they use it. No kidding, dude. I, uh, I, I admix. I know how that goes. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's the thing. It's one of those things of like. I Like I said, I, I feel salt nicks are misused. There are meant to absorb easier. They're supposed to be smoother. That's why you got to go so high with salt nicks. Because honestly, I've tried like mixing with salt nicks. I personally didn't like it. I didn't care for it. But doing it like at a three milligram, you don't even feel it. Like honestly, you there is like no throat hit. There is nothing. And you can vape it very, very easily. But with that being said, unless you're like a colossal amounts of um uh, like uh, if you're a smoker and you're like just a colossal smoker like a certain mr nick garrity who was going through five packs a day you really do not need 15 milligram anything you really don't i mean when i first started vaping on free base nicotine or base nicotine or whatever you want to call it uh I started at like 24 milligram and that was more than enough it hits hard and it gets you by the boo-boo
Wait, wait, what? I am not copying you, sir. I've never heard you say with that being said. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, there's that, that and... You know, selling to kids, it's one of those things of like, yeah, are they creating a, a new generation of nicotine addicts? I can't argue that because if you're getting into 50 milligram, yeah, you're going to get addicted fucking easily. But at the same time, I mean, there it's one of those weird like double edged sword type things where within trying to protect the children, you uh, harm adults and uh, you harm not only the people that are currently vaping that have found vaping and have gotten off cigarettes because of vaping, but you end up harming those that have not hit that point yet. And it takes away one, one potential to quitting. So it's just like a double edged sword, as I said. Uh, now I'm like, what did I miss in the comments here? Uh, uh. And like I have quite a, a nice amount of people watching but this isn't like Grim Green where he has to put slow mode on because if not it just goes like this for endless days alright I missed something and I have no idea what's going on <laughs> oh, and my wife is picking on me over here all right so i got this little video right here hopefully it works it will like freeze in the middle for some reason it kept freezing when i was trying to like uh get this video but here you go uh i'm gonna shut up for a little bit and you guys get to listen to this of uh, city council members i'm dr karen relucio i'm the public health officer and public health director of napa county i'm here to talk about health issues that are associated with electronic smoking devices also. And just there's also such thing as secondary vape exposure. So um, people that have been around people that are vaping have as much nicotine in their bloodstream as somebody that vapes. As um, and so let me talk about some direct health effects of nicotine. And let me start first with the lungs. I would like to talk about the epidemic that's going across the United States, which is the e-cigarette vaping lung associated injury or e-valley. So but there the is also another lung disease that has been associated with this, which Yeah, this is the part where it froze for no reason. Just called then... popcorn lung, and the clinical thing, uh, the clinical definition is bronchiolitis obliterans, but it's easier to say popcorn oh, lungs. Uh, so, so aside from the lungs, I'm going to start with the brain. So um, nicotine is a highly addictive neurotoxin that stimulates the pleasure and reward pathways in the brain, and so it is as addictive as heroin and cocaine. So, and then the other part that it affects is cardiovascular system and reproductive and systems. It causes and uh, they were marketed as a smoking cessation tool that is safer than traditional cigarettes. Adults. Fast forward. So the tobacco to industry has um, advertised e-cigarettes as producing a harmless water vapor. Yet the liquid that is vaped contains nicotine, propylene gly glycol, which is found in antifreeze. Um, tetrahydrocannabinol, which is found in marijuana and causes the mind-altering effects, and other flavorings, additives, and other toxic chemicals, and the products of combustion of e-cigarette juice include heavy metal. And, uh, city Council members, I'm Dr. Karen Relucio. All right, it started over for some reason. All righty, so uh, that is the... Uh, health of napa valley uh i can't remember what her title was but obviously somebody has not been paying attention to anything or they refuse to see what is actually going on and i mean she brings up popcorn lung at one point and it's pathetic that in 2020 we are talking about something that was debunked what say five five or four to five years ago and it's just really bad 
Yeah, no, exactly, <laughs> Unicorn Soul. I want what she's having. Yeah, no kidding. And it's very, very sad time. She brings up popcorn lung. She starts talking about secondhand vaping that the nicotine can get in your system just by being around a vapor. And it's one of those really sad, pathetic things. And they've even done studies on secondhand vapor, and they've had, like, those air quality control things just sitting in a vape shop. They didn't tell the customers. Like, the employees were in on it. But they just let everybody do their thing. They just kind of, like did their thing and they've done that a couple of times honestly this is a study that has been done a couple of times and nobody her twitter and flood it yeah pretty much dude and um i actually got that off of what is his name i i'm terrible with names here let me look him up charles a gardner like seriously this dude like is on it if you guys really want want uh I know he posted. Yeah, there it is. Oh, okay. It was Stefan Didek. He he was the original poster of this, but it's one of those weird, sad things that like. If you guys don't know Stefan, he's an awesome dude. He's out of uh, Northern California, and he's been doing all that crazy stuff out there, or at least attempting to, because I know the government's fucking him over. But you know, <laughs> she's still a virgin. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's one of those things. Like they've done studies and they've shown that like the air quality of a vape shop with people vaping inside of it is the same like stepping outside. So it's one of those things. Yeah, Philly Charles is an awesome dude. He really uh, keeps up with the news. Honestly, I go to him first just to see what is new because the dude stays on it and I it's so much easier to find articles through him and trying to like wade through all the bullshit because honestly if you just even look up vape news you go through so much garbage before getting through anything with actual anything like with any substance or any real ideology like I don't even know like I do have a couple other things I want to get to if I have time but yeah this she is supposed to be in charge of health in Napa Valley, and this is just bad that, like, here we are, 2020, and as uh, DC Rackley put it, it's just so sad that we um, we still have to prove out all these points. They Even, like, like, last year, the CDC had the balls to say that the UK studies were bullshit. <laughs> oh that dude that's bad combusting yeah yeah dude and that's the thing it's like combustion there's no combustion where the fuck is the combustion you want to explain to me where that starts i mean here uh, i'm gonna do this right now just because i'm being an asshole talk amongst yourselves Alrighty, so the definition of combustion. That's what I'm looking up right now. According to the Webster's Dictionary is an act or instance of burning using a rapidly chemical process as oxidants produce heat, usually light, or violent agitation. So that's combustion right there. At no point does that really apply to vaping. And no point. She's my spirit animal. <laughs> you need a Siggy after that. No kidding, dude. Uh, it's it's terrible. It's so... It's pathetic. It's sad. And infuriating all at the same time. Alrighty. So, let's see. I'm going to move on to something else. But, yeah. These are the people that we're having to convince... <laughs> I did not even see you there. But yeah, these are the people we're having to convince. And they really don't care to hear it. And I mean, a lot of it is money-based. A lot of it is whose hand is in whose pocket. And we're having to deal with it. And it's very, very sad state of affairs that, like, they're supposed to be looking out for our overall good. And obviously, it's not it. I mean, you saw what it said at the end of the video there. And it's so true. It's so damn true. Alrighty, so this one is from cspdailynews.com. This was published on uh, yesterday, January 29th. It says, Enjoy Stop Selling Fruity flavor, Flavored E-Cigarettes. Enjoy Scottsdale 
Ariz. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Enjoy Holding Ink, which makes Enjoy Daily and other disposable electronic cigarettes, has voluntarily halted all sales of its fruit flavored products. According to the Wall Street Journal reports, this decision comes as lawmakers and anti vaping advocates raise concerns that young people might migrate to the devices, the report said, which. If you guys look up any survey that they've done with youth, meaning about junior high to about early college age, the main reason they start they even tried vaping at any point in their lives was out of curiosity. It had nothing to do with the fucking flavors. Uh, Jewel got rid of the all their flavors except for tobacco and menthol. Guess what? They still kept doing it. That has not changed the damn bit just because they got rid of the flavors. So it's one of one of those really, really, really sad things. I'm popping out chat here so I can see what you guys are saying because I have you on the same kind of window situation here. Hey, everyone. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that eventually. Uh, let me see. Oh, we're going to get mess. We're going to do things. Whiffy things. Oh, that's, too, that's terribly funny, dude. Let me see. Uh. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, is barring most flavors, including fruit and mint, from unauthorized cigarette-based e-cigarettes or cartridge-based e-cigarettes until companies go through the pre-market tobacco application, PMTA, process. But the FDA's new policy, released January 2nd, states the flavor restrictions don't apply to completely self-contained disposable products. Okay, so basically, like, kind of like Sigalikes were back in the day. As long as the pod don't change, they don't care. I hear you, DC Rackley. I hear you. Violently, violently irritated. Dude, trust me. Trust me. I was a two to three pack a day smoker. And currently I'm on three milligram and even like with my mouth to lung stuff, um, I've tried salt nicks. I did the 20 milligram, 25 milligram felt like a little too much for me. What I have in this guy is a 12 milligram MTL juice from, uh, where'd you go? Where's the bottle from rescued e liquid. See right there. That little fella this is it right there. But, um, what's it called? And then I mix my own and those are all like at nine milligrams. So I'm just, yeah, it's one of those things. Uh, it, it's helped me, uh, quit. And that's like one thing I was looking like for articles today. And that was something I kept finding was a lot of, uh, anti vaping stuff. But the main point that they were trying to put across was that it didn't help anybody quit anything. And I'm like, bullshit. Talk to any of my fucking friends. Any of them. You guys you guys could probably hit them up and let them know. Next, they will, they will have some Mac flavor. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and that's one of those things. That, like, we all quit. And we all found our way down. You know? And for some, it was gradual. For some, it took a while longer. For some, it was rapid. I mean, Phil Lee earlier talked about how he... Uh, he smoked for 40 years. He was going through about 40 ounces per week of hand rolled cigarettes. And he started at 18, then went to 12. And then next thing you know, he was on three. So it's one of those things of it is it. He has, you know, it's one of those things we quit smoking, but they don't, they want to look at it as we're trading one for the other. And they're the same exact thing. And they're not it's harm reduction. Uh, it's like that argument comes in of like, this is tobacco. It's not tobacco. It might be derived from tobacco, but it's not tobacco. And even then, the thing is that in cigarettes, they have so many additives and stuff like that, that that's what's really harmful. It's not even like the tobacco itself. It's what they add to it to make it like more addictive, to make it more processed, more filler. It's kind of like processed foods, you know, how much more filler is in there just to fill you up, but not actually give you the whole bit, you know? All right, so where was I on this? So uh, disposable e-cigarettes 
represent about 3% of e-cigarette sales in stores tracked by Nielsen, according to the journal Sitting Wells Fargo. Enjoy Daily Disposable e-cigarettes is similar in shape to a cigarette, and they can't be refilled. So yeah, I was right. It's like cigarette likes back in the day. Or recharge. Priced at $5.99 each, the company's website and sold in convenience stores. The brand represents approximately 13% of the company's sales, the report said. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Enjoy is also known for pod-based e-cigarettes. Enjoy Ace, its watermelon and blueberry refills will be barred under the FDA's new policy. Fruit fruity flavors account for about 70% of the company's sale, and the report said Scottdale or Rees based company oh arizona okay i didn't put that together and let me see arizona based company will stop shipping all products except those formulated to taste like tobacco or menthol once the fda restrictions take effect next week a person familiar with a matter with the matter told the newspaper e-cigarettes make makers must submit for agencies review by May, any products they want to sell in the United States beyond that point, they can also apply to bring fruit flavored products back on the market. Enjoy plans to submit application for fruit flavors, ACE, and daily disposable products, the person said. In November 20, 2018, another e cigarette maker, uh, San Francisco based Jewel Labs, stopped accepting retail orders for mango, fruit, cream, cucumber flavored pods from the more than 9,000 no, 90,000 retailers retail stores including convenience stores tobacco retailers and vape shops well, there you go look at that and that's the thing um yeah i mean that's one thing of uh nicotine can be taken away from any nightshade plant meaning like eggplants tomatoes uh potatoes you know it's one of those things of tobacco or nicotine could actually be derived from other things other than tobacco plants so that's one of those weird things of like people don't put that into into thought in all reality so yeah this is basically talking about how they're getting rid of flavored pods and i mean it's one of those things personally i don't think that it's right to be honest pods unflavored pods whatever it's like i don't know it's one of those things like i know a couple have said well we have to make concessions and yes i understand concessions need to be made but with that i am a believer of if you give them if you give them an inch they'll take a mile and time will tell on that one and hopefully i'm wrong on this and i want to be proven wrong on that fact because you know, I want to keep vaping flavors because that is really what helped me quit. Um, for me, the first flavor I ever found was a French vanilla coffee flavor. And that's what got me. And I was like, all right, I'm down for this. And I, I haven't looked back since. And I'm okay with that, honestly. I can't, like, at work, I can't stand being around smokers. That annoys me. And it's one of those things of I'm not going to be rude to them because they're not rude to me. But same time i'd rather not deal with that shit personally all right so now we're gonna skip this one this one's stupid all right so two labs is in canada is also not creating any flavors aside from tobacco and menthol all right interesting good to know that all righty so and I will say this much about like flavors. You know, I think as a DIYer, I am pretty much like covered for a while at least. And I could pretty much like just survive on what I have. But just because we have that available to us doesn't mean we just got to like be like, okay, well, I'll just start DIYing. That's not really the mindset we need to be in. That We need to still keep fighting. We need to make sure that we keep this going longer than possible. And... You know, we got to come on the other side still alive and breathing. We can't just like roll over and be like, well, I'll just learn how to do this. It's to me, it's just not the right mindset. It's 
it's very counterproductive it doesn't help anything and you know it's just one of those things it actually irks me when people say that as a DIYer it actually irks me really hard all right so this one is from uh, vape360.com this was uh, from yesterday as well nicotine expert vaping is unlikely to cause seizures earlier last spring on his way out the door of the fda then commissioner scott Gottlieb, oh yeah scott he's still around spent some of the his remaining credibility to warn americans that vaping might cause seizures he based his alert on 35 self-reported reported incidents over 10-year period from fda safety reporting portal yeah let's see it says yes you read that right 35 events in 10 years Uh, let me see so let me see we want to be clear that we don't yet know that there is a direct relationship between the use of e-cigarettes and the risk of seizures that's the thing i mean yeah i'll get into it gottlieb admitted in a joint statement with the fda deputy commissioner uh amy abernathy or amy abernathy we can't yet say it's certain that e-cigarettes are causing these seizures seizures or convulsions are known potential side effects of nicotine poisoning and have been reported in scientific re- literature in relation to intentional or accidental swallowing of nicotine containing e-liquids explained the commissioner probably while awaiting confirmation that his post fda position at pharmaceutical giant pfizer was was secured here in the uk we are looking as if we will meet the target of smoke free society by 2030 thanks to vaping note the oft quote 95 percent is minimum level and no actual harm has yet been found and that's the thing i mean back to like what i was saying of vaping doesn't help people quit then what the fuck have we been doing for the last 12 years i mean seriously look at people like grim green the dude was a heavy smoker and he found vaping and you know he was able to actually get off cigarettes and do what he's been doing for over a decade now I discovered vaping in 2012. It took me a while to quit smoking, honestly, because I I have a full-blown addictive personality. That's why I've stayed away from a lot of things in my life. And even, like, gambling is one of those weird ones where I kind of stay away. I'll play, like, video poker and stuff with fake money, but I would never do it with real money because I just see that going down a bad route. But, you know, it's one of those things of, like, we have the evidence that it helps people quit we have all this stuff like for like at least put it to 10 years put it to 2010 even though like vaping's been around a little bit longer than that but put it to 2010 10 years in this 10 year span we've only had an outbreak of anybody getting sick or actually being harmed due to vaping that wasn't entirely user error until last year and even then that was due to black market cardos with vitamin e oils in there so those were adulterated and that's the thing they are creating a black market they're gonna well the black market exists because that shit always happens no matter what it is but they're gonna make the black market bigger they're gonna like drive all this shit on the ground and it's gonna get dangerous and people are gonna get hurt in the process but you know what they're also gonna be making their money they don't fucking care they don't give a shit about us they don't really they, they talk about public health. They talk about how they're looking out for, for our safety. But in the long term, they don't care. It's more what companies are paying them. Like I've said a couple minutes ago, who's in whose pocket? That's who I would. That's what I really want to know. Who is sponsoring you? Who is paying the most for your campaign when it comes to public health? You know, uh, here in the U.S., I know a lot of people like blame Obama for uh, how our healthcare system is currently, but in all reality, it's all their fault. Republican, Democrat, senators, uh, House of Representatives, president, it's all their fault because none of them could agree on anything. They fought for days. They shut down the government a couple of times and they really, they fell on this one agreement and it's been really garbage for the last fucking couple of years. And 
yeah, I mean, it's one of those things like I, I don't know how I feel about universal health care. Honestly, I have really mixed feelings about it. But with that being said, at the same time, we shouldn't be we shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for just even basic health care. We Woo! shouldn't have to freak out. <laughs> she threw me off. And yeah, I mean, OK, like if you guys go look, um, there's a dude here on YouTube. His name is no better. He actually talks about universal health care and based on like just running numbers and Bear in mind, this dude did like a month's worth of fucking research on this. Based on the numbers, what we would pay in taxes for universal health care versus what we actually pay currently in health care, we are paying about double to triple what we should be paying for health care if we had universal health care. At that point, it just kind of becomes a different issue. And, you know, I've heard about some of the stories of like, uh, if you need a certain specialist, it takes a lot longer than it would here. Da, 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 da. That's a whole different thing in the system that would need to be looked at and corrected and yada, yada, yada. But with that being said, like we're still paying a lot. Like, honestly, I, I know some people that don't get healthcare through their work and just pay off the fine because it's cheaper to them than actually getting healthcare. And that's like a really bad thing. Honestly, like it's really sad. And you know, in the end, it's all a money-making machine. It doesn't matter who or what, you know? Let me see. Let me see what you said here, Philly. Healthcare in the U.S. makes 28% of its income from smoking-related diseases. Yeah, and that's the thing. Uh, smoking, obesity, those are things that, like, you know, drug abuse. These are things that are very preventable, but nobody's really taught properly how to treat it. Or what to actually do about it. We're just being told no. And they wag their finger like old fucking fuddy-duddy dad or some shit. And at no point do they actually tell us why. Like, they give us the reasons why. But they don't actually try to give us the proper education. Nor do they want to give, like, they talk about let's save the children. But are they actually teaching them anything? They didn't teach us shit when we were kids. If anything, like, they drove us to it because they opened more curiosity than anything else. I mean... I've said it before in other lies, but, you know, vaping rates with underage youth has gone up since they've been making this thing more and more bigger since the finger fear mongering has gotten bigger. It's just been complete garbage and it hasn't helped. The more they, they put a light on it, the more kids are curious, the more they're going to want to try it out and gravitate to it. But you know what? They're doing it all for the fucking children. I don't even know where I was at over here. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, let's see, there's very little chance anyone could vape or smoke enough nicotine quickly enough to cause actual nicotine poisoning. The little nicotine buzz from uh, a buzz some teenagers chase with their jewel isn't even same league as actual overdose, which involves a whole series of escalating symptoms before reaching the seizure stage. Healthcare in the U.S. is so expensive that if you get health insurance to travel there, they throw in the rest of the world for free. Because <laughs> I've used it. All right. That is fucked up, dude. That is fucked up. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Here in the U.S., healthcare is like even it's like, um, again, no better. He talked about how when the insurance companies first came out they weren't called insurance companies they were called assurance companies they would assure you that you would get some form of health care didn't mean you were going to get good health care didn't mean you were uh secured proper health care it just meant that you were assured that you would get some health care so keep that in mind when you think about that kind of shit Seriously, go check out the dude's channel i mean the dude does like a lot of uh, social science stuff uh he started off as a social science channel, I, he still kind of does that, but he, he like bounces around a lot. Uh, his political views are very, uh, for the most part, moderate, even though he is, he even talked about in one of more of his recent videos that he is kind of getting away from just trying to stay moderate and actually voicing who the fuck he is, which I can appreciate that whether I agree with him or not, that's a whole different thing. And I mean, uh, when it comes to the political scale, one big problem we have in this country is that we follow a flag to the end 
and at no point do we really question parts of their policies we just look at this is the side they are in this is the side i'm supposed to follow and this is where i'm sticking to at no point do you question their policies or even parts of their policies and that is a very sad state of affair that we have in this country that we don't have third parties they don't mean shit we we have a bipartisan like overall government that's not even how this country was founded we were supposed to be more broad spectrum we weren't supposed to have career politicians like that's really not what we were supposed to be but here we are and i assume our forefathers are rolling in their graves but that's just my 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 ideas on that and clown knows because he deals with his (laughs) in-laws yes uh see i had to go to the u.s when i was still able-bodied and working for uh, working my employer paid for it and he only had offices in the uk and us but i used the insurance for a trip to nam namibia okay i have no idea where that is man interesting so basically if you get health care to go to the u.s you get health care to go anywhere else is that is that what you're saying phil Okay, okay, it's in your Botswana. Okay, cool, cool. Looks like a very, very nice place. Yeah, I'm, I am that weirdo that likes to do research because I like that Southwest Africa. All right, cool. All righty, so. All right, I'm coming down the last four minutes. That ranting got pretty long, and it's one of those things. All righty, so. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate you guys and the last four of you that are still around. I appreciate you. And my wife keeps making faces. Appreciate that. All right. So um, Monday, come hang out over on the Vaping with the Omis channel. We got all the guys and all that stuff and just come hang out. She makes fun of the way that I talk with my hands. I'm way too Hispanic to not do this. See? See what I mean? I'm way too ethnic to not talk with my hands. I don't know. It's just a weird ethnic thing. Um, So, yeah. Come hang out with us on Monday. (laughs) Um, Vaping with the Omis. Uh, As far as I know, I don't think we have a special guest this coming week. That might change. Be on the lookout on Instagram. We tend to, like, post that morning. Throughout the day, you'll see posts from like me, Dan, James, maybe Poon Sauce, maybe Swaggins, depending, you know, what we're doing and all that kind of thing. And you'll see the obvious thumbnail and all that kind of thing. And then on Wednesday next week, come hang out back here. We got Wolf Bite live and hopefully uh, Frank's feeling a little bit better and is less moody. Yes, moody. I said it, Frank. I said it. Calling you out on your shit, bro. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, hopefully... Uh, I'm going to try to get some videos done, post them and all that kind of thing. And yeah. So if you guys are interested in any of like the clown vape stuff, clown vapes, Omi stuff, uh, or the, um, what's it called? The uh, wolf bite stuff. If you guys want to pick up a shirt or something, there is a link down below and you guys can check the shop out and see what I got going on over there. And, uh, what else? And then, um, if you guys are interested in coils or juice, let me know. Hit me up on either Instagram, Facebook. I have a Facebook group, The Clown Crew, that actually has a link that goes into the uh, Clown Crew Discord group. I'm trying to get that thing going, but even I'm terrible about posting on that. I know the guys called me out on it. I'm terrible about posting on everything. Honestly, I kind of just keep to myself. We watch TV and hang out and all that kind of thing. So, I mean, I'm a very chill dude, honestly. <laughs> like, I'm not like... Just probably for like an hour. No? No? Okay. She says no. Yes. And as uh, Tuna just put on the, the Patreon, uh, I'm trying to keep this channel as independent as possible. I really don't even want monetization here on YouTube. I don't care for the rules and regulations that come with it. As you can tell by my videos, I cuss a lot and I am not family friendly. I don't care to be family friendly and, you know. Okay. So, if you guys want to help support the channel grow and keep going and yada, 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 all that spiel. If you want to help him buy his wife yarn. (laughs) 
Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, go check out the Patreon. There is a link down below. And yeah, that, that is me right there. So thank you for joining me. And I will catch you guys next week if I can get to the Hi. the OBS here. She's waving goodbye. Let me see. So where is the outro? There is the outro. Bye. Bye. All right. So thank you guys for joining me. And as always, vape on, mix on.